All right, you heard it. 2020 contender Beto O'Rourke comparing President Trump's immigration rhetoric to that of Nazi Germany. Joining me now to debate former Washington Post MAG editor Kathy Eru and former acting ICE director Fox News contributor Tom Homan. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Okay, so uh, 2020 contender, another one, uh, Julian Castro, also says that he agrees with Beto O'Rourke and what he said. Uh, this is what he added to that. It's very clear that we have a president who is bound and determined to de de dehumanize people, to create a fear and paranoia about them in order to, bo to boost his own political okay. fortunes. Uh, Tom, that is what he said was one of the strategies the Nazis employed. Well, look, when they compared, you know, the administration to Nazis, and, and he, he needs to do his homework. I mean, he wants to be president. He needs to study what Borbato does and what ICE does. In fact, ICE has an entire division that's dedicated to the investigation, the apprehension, and the removal of war criminals. We, re we removed many Nazi war criminals over the past few years, and we removed hundreds of people who are wanted in their home country for atrocious crimes, human rights violators. We do a lot of that work. So he ought to study what ICE does before he says things that are so insulting to the men and women who put their lives on the line for this country every day. And the last thing they need to be called Nazis and, and, and racist and anti-immigrant, it's just insulting to the men and women who, who stand up for this country on a daily basis. Yeah, and Kathy, it seems that most of those comments were directed primarily at the president himself. The Zionist Organization of America yeah. tweeted this, saying uh, they condemn this type of hateful and ignorant rhetoric in the strongest possible terms. Mr. O'Rourke should immediately apologize for his willful trivialization of the Holocaust. Ever okay? for anyone to evoke that symbolism, Kathy? No, well, uh, it, the words are so harsh, but we have 20 contenders who are going to say the worst things possible to sound the most anti-Trump. So I think comparing Trump to uh, Nazi Germany to that time is definitely probably the worst thing you could say about Trump. So these guys got themselves on the map. Now we have 18 others that are going to probably try to outdo that. But they're comparing the words of this president to the words of a leader in the past that was uh, scary and evoked hatred. So I think that's what they were trying to say, and it was very outlandish um, and got attention. And right now it's all about 2020, sadly. Yeah, and people are definitely trying to grab headlines, and they seem like they're out trying, to, trying to outdo each other, as often the case in primaries on the left and the right. Um, but something else getting attention, our own Lawrence Jones, who has been down reporting at the border, um, and he has taken some heat because of the way that he was dressed and what he was wearing. Um, yes. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman, tweeted a picture of him with this vest on, retweeted something and said, does live from the border mean party city? Fox is really out here doing the most on a budget to make the border look more dangerous than it is. Tom, he says the Border Patrol agents with him said, you're my responsibility, you're wearing the vest. That's a, that's, that's a regulation, that's a rule. Border Patrol has the same rule ICE does, and we have ride-alongs. Look, our job is dangerous. That's why there's 200 names on the National uh, Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. Border Patrol agents have died defending the border. ICE agents have died. That's why we wear vests and guns. So the regulation is if we have a ride-along or, or media with us, they're required to wear a vest. What I would say to Casio cortez you know, I think the border is a lot dangerous, dangerous in the halls of Congress. Every time I go up to the Capitol Hill where she sits and works, she's surrounded by hundreds of Capitol Police, metal detectors, to protect her. And I haven't seen any criminal cartels operating within the halls of the Capitol Hill. But she's protected. So, you know, it's, again, it's shameful that a politician would, would do something like this. You know, it's a dangerous job. If she, if she don't understand that, then shame on her. I know she's only been a congressman for three, a congresswoman for three months. But, you know, do your homework. This is a dangerous job. These men and women put their lives on the line. And people die doing this job. Yeah, I mean, Kathy, that's factual. Uh, do you think that the dispute over whether there's actual danger at the border of not, or not is simply partisan, or why the divide over defining exactly what's going on down there? Well, it's definitely gotten partisan. Everyone wants a chunk of that Hispanic vote, and right now they're the, the fastest growing voting block in our country. And they're young. It's a young group. So uh, once you get them young, they're probably going to stay Democrat or Republican. And you don't exactly know what they're going to do, who they're going to vote for. So they're trying definitely to establish themselves as very pro-Latino, pro-Hispanic. So the border has a lot to do with that. Um, but Ocasio-Cortez making fun of 
uh, Lawrence Jones. Um, he's, he's, he's a friend. He's a good guy. And I think they've told him to wear the vest. This is what he said. He was told to wear that vest. But um, we've crossed the border. I've crossed that border. I have friends who have worked on the border as um, uh, agents. And it can be dangerous in places, mm -hmm. but other places you don't need the vest. So I'm not sure where he was standing, but... Um, no, picking fights on Twitter is definitely not the way to go if you're a politician. Um, not, it's, it's, it's a little tacky, it I would seems, say. It seems the 2019 way things are going, though, although uh, all sides agree right? that there yeah. is much to be done when it comes to the border. Uh, we're looking at you, Congress. All right, Kathy, Tom, thank you both very much.